everyone. This is Saeed Hassan from Relo Azhar Mentors Platform. It's my pleasure to welcome you all to this professional development event for today. Our guest speaker for today, for today's session is Ms. Ushi Muhammad. She is an EFL teacher and teacher trainer. She is a secondary school vice principal. She is a former university instructor and she is an alumnus of Texas International Education Consortium. So uh, we are going to welcome her for this session and we are going to have very nice time with her with Nobis Teacher's Steps to Successful Teaching as the topic for today's session. Hello, Ms. Kushi. Hello, dear Mr. Said. Hello, everyone. Am Hello. I have a permission to start? Yes, now okay. you can start. You can start. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for you, Mr. Said. Hello, everyone. I hope you are all doing great with this coronavirus. I hope you are all adjust to this social distancing. Thank you so much for your time, for being with us. Thank you for this great platform, for gathering all of us to share what we have here in this, uh, in this time, for, uh, like in coronavirus. Well, as Mr. Said said, uh, this is my uh, background education. Also, I am a former basketball player. I've been playing basketball for like 15 years and I coached basketball. So there are so many interesting things that I've been through and I'm really uh, so proud to be, uh, to experience those things. Well, today's my uh, presentation is about novice teachers, steps to successful teaching. Why did I use this, uh, like, uh, think about this title? Because when I applied for teaching career, uh, because I graduated from English language and literature, we didn't have anything about education. So I had so much trouble with my teaching career and I had no one to ask. Uh, there were no supervisors to ask. So I was digging and searching Google all the time until I found my, uh, I found my way and I paved my way to my successful teaching. I hope the thing I'm sharing with you will benefit you. For some of you will be a update for your information. For some of you uh, will be informative. So I hope you enjoy, enjoy my presentation. Let's start my presentation. So the contents are class management, which is the heart of teaching, six elements for typical lesson plan, monitoring, micro-teaching. The way I arrange my, uh, my presentation is just like PPP, like presentation, production, and practice. So micro-teaching will be the practice of my uh, presentation. Let's unveil my class management topics. Let's start with the definition. Class management create a set of expectations used in an organized classroom environment. Effective classroom management pave the way for the teacher to engage the students in learning. Here are the crucial topics that sh you should, as a novice teacher, include in your management. Teacher's role, act as an authority, mind class culture, procedures, and class disruptions. Let's come to talk about each point in detail. First, teacher's role. You know, uh, know that every class is a production of a specific teacher's management. Or you can say that uh, the behaviors of the students within the classroom are the direct product of the teacher's environment, which the teacher creates for the students. You know, we all create that environment for our students. For example, let me give you an example that we all find it in ourselves when we were teachers or we find it in our peers or we find it in our schools. For example, you see a group of students behave well or in a good way for a specific teacher while the same group misbehave for other teacher. You can see the difference is the production of both teachers management. You know, both teachers, they both have management, classroom management. One of them has a great and perfect management. The other one doesn't care about the management. So this creates misbehavior, abuse, and bullying inside your class. 
So please take care of that topic or this point if you don't want to have any bullying in your class. We as teachers are responsible to create a safe environment for our students. If not, we will expect misbehaviors and bullying inside our classes. We must focus first on students' behavior and engage them with our classes, then focus on learning. With all due my respect for every teacher, like um, when we uh, enter the classes at the beginning of the year, we immediately start with, uh, my name is blah, 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 I'm teaching this, and that's it. Without taking care, uh, taking care of the students' psychological status, without asking them anything, without asking them, what do you want out of my, cl my class? What do you want out of your life? What do you want to be? If you ask your students these questions, you will have viable goals and visions. It will help you, these goals and visions help you to create a mutual understanding between you and your students, okay? You as a teacher, uh, you have to have a rules. You have to establish rules for your classes. And the rules, when you establish, you have, you have to apply all your rules on your students. Like, do not play favorite. Do not play exceptions. Because, you know, if you do that, you create a chaotic uh, atmosphere or environment inside your class. Or you can put your students on top of one another. So you have to take care of that. Your rules, when are established, they have to apply to all. Another one, when you want to enforce your rules, please do not involve principal as an authority figure because your students will not respect you for yourself. They will respect you for the principal. So you have to have, at the beginning of, year, of the year, a strong personality that students will respect you for yourself, not for the principal. When you establish rules, you have to have three to five rules, not more than that, because expect that your students will forget it. You have to enforce your rules from time to time and remind them, especially when they have a vacation. You have to remind your students of the rules they have. Let me show you an example before explaining four teaching styles. This is a... Uh, at any of my friends, Mr. Said knows him. He is from Libya, Mr. Mustafa. Uh, he is uh, establishing his rules in this way. From the, uh, you know, from this side, our rules. This is, uh, these are the rules that he established for his class, and the other part is the contract between his student and like and his class. This is how he established his rules. So I have another point that if you want to establish your rules, please try writing your rules in a positive statement. Do not order your students. You know, students are establishing their characters. They don't like to be ordered. They want to be asked. So when you establish your rules, try to market it. Uh, what I mean by market, marketing your rules, I mean that when you establish the rules, posted in somewhere in the classroom that everyone can see it and it will be beneficial for some other teachers. Let's go back to four teaching styles. You know, uh, we have four teaching styles. I know every one of us will imagine each of us in one of the style. So I'm asking you to imagine yourself or which uh, style do you see in yourself? and which style do you want to prefer and use it in your daily teaching? First style, authoritarian style. Very controlling, but not involved with the students. This teacher doesn't care of the student-teacher relationship. Here, the teacher reads of a PowerPoint or explains the content of the subject. Uh, this class is a very teacher-centered class. You know why? Because uh, the students are simply sit in their places and remain quiet. Class discussion are not encouraged at all. This kind of teacher wants their student to sit in their places, doesn't want any question. This type of teacher is uh, very strict, 
no, uh, it's uh, inflexible and uh, enforces his rules or her rules very strictly. So uh, this kind of teacher is very organized. So I want to imagine, are you this type of teacher or do you prefer this type of style? Let's move to the second uh, style, authoritative. Authoritative teacher, uh, this kind of teacher is highly controlled and highly involved. The teacher cares about the teacher-student's relationships. This type of teacher, firm, but fair and flexible, and hears the students out and encourages the students and encourage the uh, class uh, discussions. Also, this type of teacher gives the sense of belonging to the most of the time this type of teacher sends or gives positive uh, positive feedbacks to the student because this type of teacher uh, wants their students to be successful. I will call this type of teacher uh, or his uh, or her class a very student-centered class. Vice versa of these two, we have two other, permissive and indulgent. Permissive style, uh, this teacher has very little control and very little involvement. This teacher, unfortunately to say that, doesn't care about teaching career. He or she thinks that it's the way to pay your bills, which is not true. Teaching is much more than that. If you, uh, like, you, want, to, you want to set your students for academically and psychological uh, manner for your students. So simply this teacher comes in the class, reads out of the PowerPoint or plays music or movies to waste time, doesn't prepare well. And uh, I mean, those points make that teacher to have a chaotic controlled class. I would call that a chaotic centered class. We have the last uh, style, indulgent style. This teacher uh, has very little control, but highly involved with the, uh, with the students. I don't want to forget that uh, the permissive teacher doesn't care about teacher-students relationships and never notice suffering students. You know, we as teachers always should take care of suffering students, but uh, permissive doesn't care of that. Indulgent teacher is uh, vice versa to that cares about teacher-student's relationship, and works very hard, prepares for the class, and prepares a very good lesson plan, an exciting lesson, and fun plans for the class. But the problem is with this teacher, is uh, the teacher finds a difficulty to say no to the students, because students do whatever they want, and they're out of their uh, seats, and uh, this type of teacher doesn't uh, enforce the rules very strictly. This is the problem with this teacher. All right. I hope you imagine yourself in one of those. Here's the question, Rose, that which type of teaching style do you prefer? I would prefer authoritative style, in my opinion. Like, I would love that. Let's move to another topic in the classroom management, which is authority figure. You know, from the first day we introduce ourselves as a teacher to our classes, we have to appear as an authority figure. You know, uh, when we present ourselves in such figure, it helps the teacher to gain respect and trust. These two qualities are really, really important and necessary to lead students. You know, you are a role model for your students. So you have to at least have these two qualities to lead students and they look up to you as a role model. How can we gain this manner or this figure? Through these simple uh, these points. For example, uh, be confident in yourself and the way you teach. When you prepare well and you plan for fun and exciting and uh, your preparation is uh, well organized, you'll be confident in your teaching. So be confident the way uh, of your personality and your teaching. Second point, be direct. Speak with conviction when you address a misbehavior. You have to look into the student's eyes very well. Okay, uh, be confident in yourself and the way you teach. 
be direct with the uh, be direct speak with conviction when you address misbehavior look directly into the student's eyes when you address a misbehavior you have to have the spirit of challenging you will never be a successful teacher if you are afraid be calm and show that you are in control don't don't rattle don't tremble in front of the uh, class Another point, stand tall and straight. You know, your posture matters. The way you walk, the way you stand in the class, it sends a message to your students. So you have to take care of these single details. Speak with deep, steady voice. Do not rush your words in th inside the class. Your words should, should wait, you know, but you have to have a deep, steady voice. Lastly, uh, but not least, because we have another one, don't forget to smile. Dress as an authority. I'm not asking you to dress as a military. I'm asking you to dress simple, but as an authority, because these two qualities uh, send a message to your students. You know, you remember when we were all students, we paid like our attention to every single detail of our teacher's dress, shoes, hair hairstyle hair color makeup nail nail polish everything so it's a personal matter but i will advise you to to dress simple but as an authority figure another one uh, which is the last one and i i love this one please uh, take this one into consideration don't you ever forget to smile to your students you know we all have domestic problems the students, the teachers, and especially right now in this uh, coronavirus case we have right now, no matter how bad your day uh, you, are, you are having or you are feeling that day, by smiling to your students, you are, uh, you are modeling a positive and productive attitude that will be mimicked by your student. You know, uh, it will make them always ask themselves and will, they will be curious to know the secret of your everyday smile. You know, if you do that, believe me that one day, because it happens to me, uh, one day your student uh, will ask you inside the class and asks you, teacher, what is the secret of your everyday smile? If the, if the students ask you this type of question, know that your message being delivered. What type of message? Like, uh, it sends them off with happy feeling. This is the message to begin their class and their day. You know, uh, uh, your smile may be the first act of kindness uh, which students uh, experience during uh, their day or to start their class. So please don't you ever forget to smile to your students. It's a really, really nice thing for your psychological status and your, for your student's psychological status. Let's move to another topic for class management, which is build your culture. When I say build your culture or class culture, you know, it comes to your mind like every nation, every country, even every family has a culture. You know, our culture from Kurdistan is different from your culture in Egypt. You as a teacher should have a different culture from another teacher. And you have to establish a classroom culture, which is, you, which is like, uh, it shows that you are the owner of that culture. So uh, when you want to establish that culture, it's a good important key to engage your students with you before learning. Uh, you have to create a shared vision Ask them how they want to be treated. What do they want out of your class and out of their lives? You know, when you ask them this question, you create a mutual understanding with you and with your, student, your students. Also, uh, it helps you to plan your lesson plan very carefully, and uh, you can have a good motivation for your students. Also, this question will lead to create your goals and visions for your class. You know, you know the status of uh, psychological status of your students. You know, you have to remind your students with their visions pretty much often. You have to encourage them and lead them toward their goals. For example, 
this uh, like uh, when you ask those questions you find out some of your students doesn't like attend your class or some of them they don't have a good English because I I teach English I have all the examples about English you know uh, it happens to me while I was teaching university five boys from the first day of my starting lecture at the university physical education they came to me, they said, teacher, we hate English. We hate English grammar, especially. I didn't frown my face. I didn't get angry or I didn't go to the dean to complain about them. I smiled to them and I said, let's make a contract. Attend my lectures three times. If you do not like my lectures, you are free and I'll make you pass. Believe me, when they they saw me i didn't get angry and i encouraged them they immediately they didn't escape any of my class they were the first to attend my class they even got the highest grade <clears throat> among all the students i told them i'm not going to teach you grammar i'm teaching you english sports terminology sports those type of things that make you like make your lecture interesting so they agreed and we move forward encourage your students and lead them toward their goals <clears throat> create a family environment in your class in your class <clears throat> sorry uh, you know uh, arrange field trip get them out of the class foster friendship you can create a family atmosphere like celebrating their birthday sometimes play favorite movies as a break or as a reward when your students get a high grade you can encourage your student and say next time because you got a high grade i will play your favorite music or your favorite movie this means a whole world to your students uh, <clears throat> display their work and pause them on the wall show, uh, show them how proud you are of them you know uh, give uh, and send positive notes let their parents know about their progressions they love it they will be all encouraged create a safe clean and aesthetic environment for your students you know tell them that it's our class it's not the janitor's responsibility to have uh, to clean our class let's do it together so they will appreciate this environment they are uh, studying in decorate your class accordingly what i mean by that is this example my friend nadir he is from morocco he sends me this his classroom design which i love it so much because i don't have my own classroom that's why i cannot design it the way i want i go to the uh, students the students doesn't come to my class so here is different in Iraq uh, this is how the, uh, the way he designed his classroom just so you know it is I, I'm showing you these examples to have a, uh, a clear image in front of you let's move forward uh, forward to, uh, towards procedures you know establishing a proper procedure from the beginning will help to transition from one activity to another and organize and control your classroom you know if you have these procedures your class will work as a well oil machine it will be so perfect you will well, you know at the beginning you will be tired from the beginning like one month or one half a month but after that everything will go smoothly Taking attendance, you know, you have to have a, a procedure for taking attendance, taking exams and quiz. For example, face forward, do not move around, don't talk to your friend. When time finishes, put your pens on the desk. Uh, distributing materials, for example, you can, uh, you can do the distributing or you can have a, some students to distribute or students take part to distribute materials. Collecting homework, you have to have a a place in your room to place their homework to not miss any homework going to bathroom which is a good procedure if you do not want to in, uh, interrupt the flow of your lesson by taking permission teacher I want to go to the bathroom uh, I was in America in Austin I attended uh, my mentor's classroom she hanged a big Mexican hat on the wall I didn't know at the beginning 
So one of the students, without any ticket permission, she went to the wall and put the hat on her head and went out. And after a while, she came back. I was so surprised that the teacher didn't say anything. When the teacher came to me, I asked her, what was it? She said, well, this is the procedure of going to bathroom. Everyone knows about it. So that's why I'm not going to interrupt the flow of my lesson. That was a really great thinking. We all, as teachers, you have to our, have our magical touch on our classroom. We have to be creative. Group activities and show and what they should they and what should they do if they finish early. You know, sometimes we get bored. We don't have an energy to uh, teach, and or sometimes or sometimes your students they don't have the energy to teach, uh, to learn. So you have to have a procedure. If something like that happens, what will you do? Are you going to show them a movie? Are you going to play uh, a fun game inside the class or let them read? Those type of things. Drinking water and eating inside the class. We as teachers, sometimes we get uh, like angry when we see our students eat. If you have a procedure, your students will not lie to you. For example, I have this procedure in my class. I told them, if you get angry, please, uh, sorry, hangry, uh, eat your sandwich and eat, drink your water without taking permission. I don't want you to lie to me. If you have this type of procedure, your student will not lie to you. You know, everything you have to think about it in teaching as a psychological manner. You have to train your students for success, for future leaders. Let's move to another one. Mind the disruptions and consequences. These are the like crucial topics. Uh, before moving to the uh, disruptions, let's talk about the consequences. There are uh, consequences are the result of students' actions or misbehaviors. You know, try to explain and introduce the school's policy if you have it in your school. Get them familiar with the consequences from the beginning of the year because otherwise your student will not follow the consequences and you will have a chaotic class. Tell them there are consequences for every misbehavior. Tell them about uh, your school's vision, about those who misbehave and those who are uh, good behave or well behave. Uh, here are some types of uh, consequences that you can take as a teacher. You can call their parents. You can have a detention, moving seats in the class. You know, when you remove students from the, their favorite friends, they will be so sad. So this is another punishment for them. Uh, 101 talk, write an apology letter, or you can make your students sign on a uh, behavior contract. Tell them that there, uh, there are, uh, if that's the behavior will be, your behavior will be documented as an evidence and will be at their uh, record. And they will be followed whenever they are transferred to another school which is really bad for their record. On the other hand, tell them that there are rewards for those who behave well. Always there's a good side and bad side for everything. Let's move to disruption, uh, types of dis disruptions. We have minor disruption, chronic, and major. Minor disruptions, they are behaviors that do not want punishment, but still compromise learning. You have to take care of that point. Still compromise learning. Types of minor disruptions, tapping pen, whispers, doodling, giggling, dis disturbing colleagues. You know, we are, we are all teachers. We know those types of things. Maybe you, there are others that I don't know about it. We can share it together. So how can you deal with them? You can get quiet or give a student a look or a stare, which is sharper. Uh, write a warning in a small note uh, sticker and hand it to the student if you don't want to interrupt the flow of the lesson. Or you can call the name of the student to get him back on task. Or you can tap on student's desk. Those types of disruptions doesn't need to overreact, overreact with it. Please don't overreact for minor disruptions. Do not involve principal with them. 
uh, you can handle it inside your class and you can solve everything. Okay. Another type chronic disruption, which is the continuation of behaviors even after being addressed by the teacher as affirmation, like doodling, giggling, those types of things. Uh, here, uh, the types of, uh, like uh, the examples of consequences, have to take those consequences. For example, you have to call their parents or uh, moving uh, seats, 101 talk signing on a contract you know the procedure i uh, i really like when something like that happens i immediately after telling the students to not repeat the same thing i will make the student to sign on the behavior contract they will be quiet like they will not repeat the same uh, misbehavior that they did before or you can involve parents with it uh, after that uh, when you handle those things, you have to move forward to find a solution for the pl a problem. You can talk to your students because they are your students, you know them, or you can make them uh, talk to someone else if they do not like to talk to you as a teacher. Last uh, disruption, which is major disruption, uh, which endanger teacher and students, for example, those type of disruptions destroying class uh, property destroying schools property starting fires bringing weapons and making threats for that disruption you have to involve uh, your administration or your pr uh, principal to solve them otherwise you will be in trouble so it's good to uh, to do those things and i have an advice for myself First, then you as teachers, please consider your lesson planning and prepare it well. Include variety of teaching style and activities to avoid boredom and decrease a student's misbehavior. Try to have an exciting spirit with your students. Uh, try to talk to your students and find their interest of learning. Engage it with, with your class or, or with, your, uh, with their real life. Add some humor and jokes to your class. Your students will love them. You know, I always tell my friends, uh, we have to be a psychologist, a parent, a friend, a teacher with our students. Otherwise, we will not be a good teacher. We have to know something from everything. If we want to find you, our students' interest, know something from everything. All right. Let's move or unveil our curtain to the elements for good lesson plan. <clears throat> Whether you teach uh, se uh, several subjects or teach in a specific content area, lesson plans matter. The quality of your lesson plans will in great part determine how efficiently class time is used, this is one, and how much content your students learn each period. You know, each lesson plan should have these six crucial elements. There are other elements, but these are the crucials. Materials, assessments, differentiation or motivation, timing, sequencing, and objectives. Let's uh, start from the bottom. Uh, uh, objectives are brief statements that descri describe what students will be expected to learn by the end of the school year or end of the course or end of the unit or end of the lesson or project. Each lesson plan should have a learning goal. The goals should be characterized as SMART. You know, the acronym SMART stands, each letter stands for something. S for specific, M for measurable, A for achievable, R for relevance, and T for time bound. Uh, when you try to uh, design your lesson plan, you have to ask yourself, why will I design this lesson plan? You know, these questions are really important if you want to uh, design a lesson plan. What will students learn from uh, this objective or this lesson plan? You have to think about all the, <clears throat> all the crucial knowledge, skills, and language awareness that student learns during student learned uh, during that specific time. You know, uh, 
in order if you want to know uh, your objectives are reached uh, your objectives uh, should describe something that can be measured this is really important they should be measured because of that, uh, uh, because of that, your lesson plan should describe a behavior that can be observed, and it must describe that the student should be able to do after the lesson finishes. You know, those four acronyms each has a uh, a part to do and complete your objectives. For example, let me uh, give you an example for my presentation. My presentation, like right now, currently, is about six elements of a good lesson plan. By the end of uh, this, uh, this session, for these six uh, elements, you will be able to describe the six key elements of the lesson plan. This is uh, what SMART acronyms should work in your objectives, okay? Let's move to sequencing. Sequencing uh, is a teacher need to learn and how it will be done if effectively during the class time. Uh, or, or I can say that uh, sequencing describes what will happen uh, during the lesson, uh, the order in which it happens, and how will you transition between one activity to another and connect it to another activity? Or those, your lesson should be connected with previous and next uh, lesson. You have to ask yourself, uh, when is the suitable time to do a specific activity? Or uh, what a logical but meaningful way to organize uh, the lesson? You know, uh, the sequencing and objectives uh, should be interconnected. Each and el elements I told you about, they are all connected together. They are all like a sequence. You cannot like uh, move something and uh, replace it with another. They are all connected. I brought these two structures. These two structures are common structures for lesson plan. The first one, I just, <clears throat> describe it as a restaurant menu you have to attract your customers just like attracting your students for your lesson plan salad which is a starter a warm-up a, a, a review for previous lesson a main course or a main dish what you order or how you present your lesson content ppp should be included presentation production and practice a dessert which is the activities Desserts, you know the desserts, students love desserts, especially if you include games in your activities. Fruits, review and plenary. The second structure, <clears throat> through this structure, we want our learner, like the second one, the bottom one, we want our learners to learn new language. The, second, the first one is the same, but the first one is more obvious. Uh, we want our learners to, new, uh, to learn <clears throat> new skills, to apply them in the real situation and be able to speak with it comfortably. How can we do that? By removing slowly the teacher as a director and put the role and give the role to students. For example, the first three parts, warm up, introduction, presentation, is teacher time talking, TTT. But the third, last third, activities, evaluations, and application are for, are for students, STT, student time talking. If you do that, you will help your student to think critically and evaluate things and synthesize things, like those ideas, those activities, those objectives you are giving them. That's why you have to give independency to your students to do those things. Okay, here are some examples uh, like for that a lesson plan sample. It's a template for you. You can use it or you can have your own, like which template good for you, you can use it. This is an, a sample for you. Another sample, uh, if you remember or any of you attended Mr. Samir's uh, session about mentors and mentees. 
he talked about mentors. This is a good observation sheet for you as a mentee to take it to observe your mentors class. It's very, very good details, detailed uh, sheet. You, you do not need uh, to write anything from bottom or thing because they are all in good detail. We had uh, this sheet uh, where, when we participated in the Texas International Education Consortium, which is really informative, informative of course, we had with Mr. Said and a good time. Let's move uh, to the next element, which is uh, timing. It's important for the teacher to design a proper lesson plan according to the time that the, the teacher has. Be flexible and estimate how, uh, how long <clears throat> each part of the lesson will take. It's important also to give amount of time to students to process activities and engage in new learning. Uh, how can we do that? Like previously when I to uh, told you in the sequencing by removing the teacher as a director and give the student the role. <clears throat> Next or fourth element, differentiations and motivations. Guys, this is really important key element. It is a key psychological status of the students, uh, like status when you think about their psychology. It's every teacher's uh, responsibility to take this point into consideration. Because, uh, because here in the differentiation, you learn about each of your students' needs. In these days, we all have a variety of students, which include diversity, because you know, we all, all have IDPs, special needs students, mentally and physically, intelligent students, or low level in, uh, of intelligent students. Those type of things you have to take into consideration. Uh, you have to know how to organize activities for all and, not, and do not leave any student behind because your students love, uh, they love to belong in your class. You have to organize each activity, at least one activity to include all of, you, all of your students and give them the sense of belonging. They do not uh, love to be left behind. Please consider your lesson plan, include every single detail of your students if, or, or all, they, all they need you know some of your students they may need individual work prayer work or group work or you as teacher give them information you know you have to make sure to keep balance of interaction during the class you know uh, those tips will help you <clears throat> as a teacher with differentiation and motivation to create a learning environment which is productive or multiple learning style with all students included in. You know, you see happy faces here. Your, stu your students should look like that. Uh, assessment. We have a lot of assessment. For example, principal for the teacher assessment, supervisor assessment, uh, you know, those assessment. But the most uh, crucial are uh, teacher for student assessment and self-assessment for the teacher. What is assessment? It's a test of understanding at the end of the lesson. You will need to test to see your students if they have learned the objectives of the lesson. How will you know that the objectives were met? Through these steps. You can give your students a quiz to know if they, your objectives were reached or met. Ask them comp comprehension questions about the subject. Homework or written assignment or you can have a group activity, or you ask your student to give a presentation about what they have learned from this, uh, this uh, like in this class, or they may be uh, prepare the presentation for the next class. This is for the students. The second one, the second uh, is for yourself. When you design a lesson plan, you have to all the time have a time for yourself to identify what worked and what did not. You know, uh, when you design an activity for your students, not every, every activity works for your students. You know, some of them won't work, some of them will work. 
So you have to evaluate yourself and implement what has worked and what hasn't worked. Last one, materials. Are the resources teacher used to deliver, <clears throat> deliver typical lesson and instruction which can support students learning and include, uh, in, increase students' success? In order to present a good lesson, you need to prepare beforehand. Please, teachers, instructors, everyone, whatever you do, prepare beforehand. Uh, think about, do a brainstorm for yourself. Uh, say I'm having this lecture tomorrow, what do I need? What are the materials should I include in my class? All, only handouts, pictures, smart devices, technology, rubrics, those types of things. You have to think about everything. If you are prepared and uh, thought about those things, you will save time and feel relaxed and prepared inside the class. Here, you can be confident in yourself. You have to prepare beforehand. Last one, uh, sorry, not last one. This is uh, C, uh, monitoring. Monitoring, it's, it is uh, another part of class management. You know, it is another good management for your class. If you want to see your class that like you are caring for them, it's a move around in the classroom and establish your presence, check for error and engage with students or check to see whether activities are going to plan and whether the learners are on task. You know, monitoring not only allows you to error correct, yet it uh, also keeps your student on task with the activity. Uh, it has another benefit. Uh, benefits. It shows your student that you care. I, I told you that uh, the teachings we are doing, it has an education part and psychological part. Here, if you do a good monitoring, you show your student that you are care. Once your students see that you are care and uh, you have a purpose of uh, your motivation to them, they will be encouraged to do it. So, uh, effective monitoring. Uh, if you want to have a good monitoring, it's better to design the class as a circle or as a U-shape. Also, uh, you as a teacher do not stay with one group. Jump from one group to another. Interact with them. Uh, give them your opinion. And as for interaction, your students like to chat with you. So interact and participate with them. Give, uh, give them some of your ideas. It's really important. They love to hear your ideas. Uh, you have to push your students to use the target language. Another point, look at the picture of the lady and the girl. This beautiful lady is crouching down and she is in the eye, at the eye level of the student. Don't stand in front of your students. It's really, uh, it's not a good view. Even if you are a tall teacher, it's really weird vision. So uh, take care of that and crouch down and be at their eye level. There is no effective monitoring if you do not do the error correction. If you do that, your uh, monitoring will be uh, effective. And push your students to work on target language or use like English, for example, I'm a English teacher or French or Spanish or whatever teacher I am, push them to interact uh, with this uh, target language. Last part of my presentation is a uh, micro teaching. Micro teaching, which is really good for everyone to know about that. You know, micro teaching, uh, let me give you a short background about it. Uh, micro teaching was uh, founded in the mid 1960s uh, by Dwayne W. Allen at Stanford University. Uh, for, to, des to, uh, to develop educators in all form of education. This is a good thing that Dwayne Allen did for education field. Every uh, Ministry of Education, before uh, hiring any teacher, they should uh, have teachers go through this process. The process is a teacher training and faculty development techniques whereby the teacher reviews a recording of a teaching session 
uh, a teaching session uh, in order to get a constructive feedback from peers and uh, from the students. You know, sometimes your students give you very beautiful feedbacks about yourself, like the way you teach, or you can uh, ch change your teaching for education before hiring any through this process because we have uh, with all due my respect for every teacher we have teachers that that they do not know anything and they raise students like ignorant students uh, like for every supervisors for every direct rate of education please think about the micro teaching it helps your teachers to improve to go through this process to, to see what, what are the good strategies they have to use in their classes. You know, I learned about this micro-teaching in America. I have no idea about it, which helped me to go again through my whole teaching career strategies I used. It's, it's really helpful. Please consider that uh, process. It's really helpful. The, uh, the steps, uh, if you want to, uh, have a micro teaching or if you want to try yourself if you are a good teacher micro teachings are uh, it should be between 10 to 20 minutes you know every uh, single part you are you want to include it in your micro teaching you have to think about each part will take some time. for example my warm-up will take two minutes my presentation will take seven minutes my recorded videos will take maybe six minutes. You have to think about the time. Stick to the time bound. Second point, plan beforehand. You should have a, like a backup or plan B if something goes wrong. For example, if I'm doing a macro teaching, I'm doing it for, you know, col uh, col uh, cholera. Uh, in the if it happens inside the class, if maybe my video doesn't work, what am I supposed to do at that time? I have to prepare materials beforehand. For example, I can write the script of the video and hand it to the students so that they can know and they have something in front of them if something goes wrong. Another one, prepare printed materials to distribute among students. You know, when you have activities uh, to do uh, after the video or, or the recording, you have to uh, print it and give it to your students and maybe give some uh, for the copies to your peers or some so, or those supervisors who are watching you you have to have a printed materials i will show you at the end what are the activities and those things record or make a video in advance about the subject you want to present for example i'm showing you a video about cholera and uh, you have to have a recorded video beforehand if something goes wrong, maybe you don't have a Wi-Fi or you don't have an electricity, something when, go, when it goes wrong, you have to be prepared. This is the brainstorming, which helps you to like the picture is a brain, brainstorming for every teacher when they are trying to do a micro teaching or when they are doing a, or organizing a lesson plan for the student. They have to ask those questions. How will I teach it? What am I teaching? Who am I teaching? Do my students understand? For example, this presentation. How will I present this presentation? You know, how am I prepared for it? What am I teaching? What, what am I presenting? What is the title for my presentation? Is it a good topic? Uh, who am I teaching? What are my participants and my students? You have to think about those questions if you want to organize a good lesson plan. Wait. This is the video. I want you all as a participant to look at the video and uh, see everything. Like look at every single detail. For example, look at the background coloring from the beginning to the end. Are they changing? from the bad to happy or good, from sad to happy, those type of things, then we come back uh, to our presentation. Enjoy watching Cholera Story. This is the story of how cholera changed my village. 
tiny germs of cholera, too small to see, spread through the wafers. So small, yet so dangerous. Without realizing, women carried cholera home in the water. Flies carried cholera on their feet. Unwashed hands spread too. We swallowed cholera germs in our water, on our food, and on our fingers. It happened so fast. By morning, my father was very sick. He had diarrhea that looked like rain water and poured out of him. I was so scared. I went for help. I never rode so fast. One look at my father and the nurse knew it was cholera. We had to work fast to save him. We made a special dream to help him. First, we made the water safe. We filtered it with cloth and boiled it for one minute. Then we mixed half a teaspoon of salt and six teaspoons of sugar in one liter of this safe water. It tasted like tears, not too salty. I worried my father would die before my eyes, but he soon felt a little stronger. The nurse explained to me that not everyone who swallows cholera germs gets sick like my father, but they can still spread the disease. Now I needed to take safe water to my village and teach them how to protect themselves from cholera. I saw a girl carrying water. I told her she could make the water safe by adding chlorine drops and waiting half an hour. There was a man about to eat with unclean hands. I told him to always wash his hands with soap and safe water after going to the toilet. Only with clean hands could he eat safely. I saw villagers spreading cholera into a river. I told them we needed to dig latrines far from the river, at least 30 meters away. This was important to keep our village clean. I found a mother preparing unsafe food. I told her, first, we must wash our hands with safe water. Then. We had to wash and clean the food, cook it, and always eat it hot, and protect it from flies. I spread the word throughout my village and ran to find my father. I was so happy to see he was better. Our village became healthy. Now we filter and boil our water to make sure it is safe. We always use that trees always wash our hands after. Food is safe from flies, washed and peeled and cooked. And we always wash our hands before cooking and eating. We made our village safe from cholera. Spread the word. Your village can be safe too. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the video. So, uh, was it good, Mr. Said? It was fantastic. <laughs> Great, Important. I hope, yeah, thank you so much. I hope you all enjoyed it. So, uh, you know, as a teacher, maybe when I'm uh, doing the micro teaching about a cholera, uh, cholera story, maybe I will ask my students, here are some questions I'm just giving you you as teachers you may have your own questions for example did you enjoy the video what was about it uh, did uh, if you want to try if they have paid uh, attention to the video uh, what color the video was uh, at the beginning and what what uh, like the color change at the end how was the sound music background was it sad or at the end was it good 
or you know those types of questions that will help you to try your students attention if they enjoy the movie like the video or those types of things here are some simple activities that i prepared for you for example after the video you hand those activities in printed materials to your students and do it all together the way you like for example fill in the gaps elicit four reasons uh, which cause cholera call, uh, write cinnamon, cinnamon, synonyms of uh, these words like sick unwashed dangerous protect or write antonym or opposite of the following words safe clean fast these are simple activities that i put just to show you how it's done okay uh, feedback sample for example when my supervisor is watching my micro teaching or my peers are watching my presentation or my micro teaching here how can you fill in for example my my name is hoshi so uh you can write it Hello to have you again so many Inshallah. times uh, so Inshallah. it's been a great time really and i'm so proud that we had you for today's session and uh, I wish you very good luck with your presentation at Thank Tennessee you. State University in very few minutes. Thank you so uh, much. So if you have some time to uh, listen to some questions by the participants, that would okay. be very uh, kind of you. So uh, please, please, yeah. my attendees, uh, my colleagues, if you have any questions to Ms. Kushi, you can unmute yourself and ask her uh, you are kindly request, requested to unmute yourself and ask any uh, questions to Ms. Bush. Okay? Please, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Said. If you, you, are so, any... you are most welcome. You are most welcome, my dear Bush. You are most I'm, welcome. I'm so honored to be with you today. So please, if anyone has a question, please go ahead. Is that Bushy? Yes, Can I ask a question? Yes. Yes, please, sir. Yes, okay. Uh, can you tell us about the situation when you faced um, uh, a problem with some students and you couldn't solve it? Uh, yes. Well, uh, from the first year uh, of my teaching. You know, I didn't have any experience uh, with teaching. When I entered the class, the teacher before me who uh, taught the students she didn't have a good management classroom this is that was the problem and i had much i have so much difficulty with them and i spent the whole year trying to uh giving them instructions to to put them in the right path you know students have a canvas mind you know they are like a dough you can shape whatever you want like you want to shape them in a good way or shape them in a bad way so the problem was in my situation my students they were shaped in a they were modeled and shaped in a bad way so i spent the whole year to pave my way and put uh, and give them instruction uh to put them in a good uh, and right path that was the really really bad situation for me and alhamdulillah, I could handle it. And until now, we are in contact. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone have a question, please? Attendees? If someone has a question, we still have uh, Yes, exactly. Can you uh, please? Uh, yes, ex excuse me, uh, the one who asks, please uh, raise your hand to make something yes, organized. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, is Mr. Uh, Tuhami, are you speaking, Mr. Tuhami? Yes, exactly. Can okay, okay, sir. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, f first of all, before I ask my question, I'd, I'd like to express my gratitude towards the presenter Thank it you, was sir. A, a great presentation basically we have learned different different things and different ideas that are exactly appreciative Thank I, you, I want to ask you how uh, you uh, we can deal with disadvantaged students uh, you know, uh, thank you so much for the compliment. It was great. And I hope you have all enjoyed my presentation. How can we deal with the disruptors? Uh, you know, I ex explained three types of disruptions, minor, chronic, and uh, major. 
yeah. minor yeah a minor doesn't need uh, this the principal's involvement you can handle it inside your class like doodling giggling those type of things I, I explained the second it it uh, it won't like um, the second the chronic you have to act as a teacher you can call their parents, you can email them, you can uh, talk to your students like one on one. You can, like you as a teacher, have to you have your own strategy to how to handle those disruptors. Okay, for example, if my one of my students uh, dis do the disruption in my class, for example, in the chronic type, I will immediately make the students sign on the contract misbehavior contract because it will make the student to be to not repeat the same uh, misbehavior and they will appreciate what they have because you know they just uh, distribute uh, like disturb the students the class the teacher if you do that they won't repeat it for for major uh, disruption you have to involve your administration or your uh, principal. For example, when they start fire, when they have a bully in high degree, or when they bring in weapon, those type of things, you have to deal with it, not just yourself as a, as a teacher. You have to involve your principal because those disruptions are in, in danger, you as a teacher and your students. This is how you deal with three types of disruptions. Thank you, Kushi. And now we have Ms. Radwa. You can, you can ask your question. Yes, please. Hello, hello Ms. Kushi. Thank you very much for your illuminating session. You're uh, welcome. And very interesting presentation. Uh, I'd, like to ask, uh, I'd like to ask you about what kind of activities uh, as teachers we can use it for inspiring students. Okay. Well, uh, I will talk about my experience, okay? Uh, you know, uh, when I talk to my students, this is, that's why I'm telling you, you have to ask your students. This is the magical touch you have to touch your students. You know, I ask my students, I find their interest. That's why I can uh, arrange activities for them and find their interest. For example, the activities I'm organizing for my boys are different from the activities that, that I'm organizing for my girls. You know, girls like Korean drama, B, uh, BTS or something like that. Like uh, they like songs, they like, uh, you know, some like smooth and soft things. But boys love soccer, PlayStations, um, uh, Russells, like uh, those type of things. You have to find their interest. For example, uh, I show the movies about Cristiano Ronaldo or Messi about their backgrounds and ask them questions and relate it to my subject. For girls, for example, if they love uh, Korean drama or Korean uh, songs, I will ask them to have the uh, subtitle and give me the, some of uh, examples, for example, find a song which has a present continuous. This is their interest. Uh, you can have your magical way to find your students' interest. That's why I'm telling you, please ask your students, see what are their interests to engage it with your class and their real life. I hope I answered your question. Thank you very much. Could you please write down your email if we, uh, if we want to ask you about uh, reference uh, like books or websites you could uh, recommend for us? So please definitely. write down your email in uh, the chat box. Okay, definitely. Well, let me... Okay, wait. thank you very much Perfect. again. Thank you. You are most welcome. There is the chat. Okay. okay. Any other question, please, participants? Hello, any other questions? No, we just want to thank you here. <laughs> okay, so thank you. You're welcome, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Kuchi. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed with, uh, the, the presentation and I enjoyed the questions. I hope I can repeat the presentation again and it would be okay. informative again. Thank you so much for everything. We, we look forward to your next presentation at our platform. So mm -hmm. we are waiting for your proposal for another thank session. You, inshallah. inshallah. 
Okay, and wish you very good luck with the Tennessee State presentation too. And uh, we will not stop you uh, anymore uh, you. because you are in a hurry. I know that. Yeah, thank so, you. Uh, so you, goodbye and thanks a lot. Uh, Mr. Said, I'm sorry, before you say goodbye, okay. uh, I, I read in the presentation, thank you for your comments. They are all supportive. Thank you so much for everything. And I, uh, one of uh, the participants asked for the presentation. I mean, uh, uh, I have, you I are have free, Mr. Said. Yes. Yeah, okay. you are free, Mr. Said. I will, okay. Yeah, I will to provide, share it uh, with them. And I will send the, the original one that this video is included in because the one I sent it to you, the video okay. is not included. I will send you okay. this one and please share well, it with Everything you. will be published on our platform. So uh, Perfect. Uh, stay tuned, please, our attendees, and you can have everything concerning the material and the PowerPoint, the video okay. uh, at our platform. So don't worry about the material or the reference uh, yes. links at all. We provide all of that. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much. Kuchi, for one more time. And inshallah, we are, inshallah. We are waiting for another uh, great session like this one. Inshallah, inshallah, inshallah. Thank you so much for all of you. Thank you. Have inshallah. a good time. Yalla, ma Goodbye. Ma Goodbye. Ma Goodbye. Ma